Hey, man. How you doing? I'm here. How are you? I'm hanging in there. You planting Working. again? Huh? Are you planting again today? Yeah, back to planting again. I had a... Uh, I had another hydraulic oil leak this morning. I just got finished fixing it, got going again. I stay fixing stuff. Oh, man. Hey, so are you coming to Indiana? You're not coming? Oh, okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. Well, shit. <laughs> It's okay if you're not going. It's okay. What do you... <laughs> so what else have you been up to? You writing any books? You writing any good books? Yes, I'm currently writing one for Udi that's got a bunch of horses in it, so he'll leave me alone. You've got a bunch of what in it? Horses. Horses? Horses. Like you ride like a horse? Why did he want to book with horses? Don't ask. Don't know. Don't know. He just wanted to book with horses. That, well, because every real. time he sees me, he always asks about horses in my blasted books and how the hero or whatever rides in on a galley steed named Sebastian. And I'm like, what? Like, have you ever read my stuff? Like, really? I know uh, I haven't read anything. Um, Brittany, I know Brittany was trying to figure out how to get a, uh, an audio book, but I don't know if yeah, she ever I... figured it out or not. Are you on audio books? Not right now, no. Okay. Well, then we're... I'm still yeah. in negotiations with uh, Tantor, so. Oh, that's cool. Um, but hopefully so where, soon. Where can I buy her one of your books? Uh, I'll bring her one to the show. What? Yeah, but you're not going. That's true too. Okay, fine. I'll mail her one. <laughs> yeah. She uh, she loves she loves the uh, the genre you write in science fiction based book. Yeah, it's, I know. It's it's more science it's more uh, science fantasy. Uh, I'm I'm having trouble with the genre right now. Fiction, fantasy, fiction. Yeah. So, yeah. fantasy, sci-fi, it kind of goes under all of it. Right. I mean, it's actually the same genre of books I read. I write, uh, I really like, um, not that I have time to read, like, ever, but did you ever read a series by, uh, I can't think of the guy's name. I can remember the characters, though. Durzo Blint. And, uh, God, it was, uh, Durzo, and, uh, there was a character, uh, that played the King Logan. King Logan, and, um, man, I haven't read them in a few years now. I'll have to go back and read them again. Uh, I, God, I can't think of who writes them. It's a three-part series: the Shadow Assassins, or something, something, something. The Night, the yes. Night Angel trilogy. Night Angel trilogy. There you go. There, we go. there you go. I was like, I know this series. Why do I know? That, that explains a lot. Man. That explains a lot. Man. It's the same guy that writes Prism, and uh, it's a Prism series. Yeah. Who is? What's his name? Um, I don't know why I keep wanting to say Ted Decker, but I know that's not it. Um, oh, this is going to get on my nerves. Hold on a second. That's all right. Have, uh, but have you ever read the books? Yes. That's, uh, he always likes, like, the vampires, and they're always getting some human lover, and there's some, you know, there's some drama, and it's, uh, like Vampire Diaries. It is not like the Vampire Diaries, but not yes, like I know what you're talking about. It's more, it's more adult version than that. Yeah. That's good. Pretty loves. She man, she gets all into that trashy TV. <laughs> she she used to make me watch Vampire Diaries. I was like, this is so bad. Why are we watching this? Brent Weeks. Brent Weeks. That's right. Gotcha. I started reading the. Um, I started reading the, the, the it's, uh, I guess the series starts with the book Prism. Mm -hmm. And I started reading that series, but I never got past the first book. Not because I didn't like it, I just never had time. Well, I understand. I, uh, I'm hard pressed for time most days. Well, I was about to say, farming takes up a lot yeah. of time. Well, so. I didn't, 
I mean, I used to, you know, in my younger years, I used to read instead of watching TV because I stayed awake long enough to read. But there's like this magic thing that happens when you turn 30 that's like, nope, you read a book, you go to bed now. You're done. You're done for today. So reading is like a past thing. The only time I ever read now is on vacation. Oh, yeah. Which I take about as many vacations as I have days off, so. So, never. Never. Yeah, never. <laughs> never read. I probably hadn't read a book in five years. Isn't that sad? Oh, I should be that is terrible. That. Well, I mean, but you are busy, and a lot of people don't understand how many hours go into doing what you guys do. So, uh, I'm, I'm easily working 16 hours a day right now. Exactly. But I'm also... I'm also like, I'm working in these tighter windows because I'm trying to work between going on the road for the shows. And so I'm working longer hours to try to make up for, you know, get things done that I'm not here. So now, yeah. now I'm working more than I used to. Or not, not more. I'm fitting the same amount of work into shorter periods of time. Oh, man. So that's exciting. But we, uh, Brittany actually did hire a guy to, uh, to start training to kind of do what I do. The only problem is we hadn't been able to get in touch with him for like five days. She's worried he might have gone back to jail. Oh, that's not good. These things happen. These things have been known to happen. Jeez. Uh, oh, good lord. So how you doing? I'm holding in here. All right. So that's about all I can say on the matter. That's fine. I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna pry into you. I know, bud. I know. Uh, I know it's nothing easy about it. All right, we're going mobile for a second. We got to. Uh, Are we doing the transporter? Off. Turn my tractor off so I can hear you. I got to. Uh, I got to take up my fertilizer tanks. Oh. Have you seen my corn planter? That thing is huge. It is, but it, it saves me so much time. So I used to. I used to plant all 500 acres with a six-row planter, and I tell you, man, I I used to uh, I used to get up to plant corn. You can ask Brittany about this when you see her or call her or talk to her or whatever. I used to get up at like 5:30 in the morning. I would go plant, and I wouldn't come back in until like 1 a.m. the next day, and I'd sleep, you know, get something to eat, sleep for a few hours, and go back right back out and do it again for like four weeks straight just so I could get all the corn planted. And I did that for a long time, and I got sick of it, and I, I told everybody, I said, look. One of two things is going to happen. We're going to buy a bigger corn planter, or we're going to milk less cows. <laughs> <laughs> One so, variation uh, or the other. Yeah, I was like, I can't, I can't do this. I'm getting too old. And I'm not, I'm not that old, but it's, it's a big difference between your 20s and your 30s, you know? It is. It really well, especially, especially when you, when you get that hard mileage on you. I'll tell you right now, working like that is hard mileage. I mean... Yeah, you're talking to somebody that did construction for 13 years and then decided yeah. after that to want to be a firefighter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. I know. That's them hard miles. Mm -hmm. It's fun, though. That's it's fun. Yeah. It's Again, just... when you're in your 20s. Yeah. You hit the 30s and you start getting out of bed going, oh, oh, wait, oh. Yeah. <laughs> oh, man, my feet hurt so bad when I hit the ground in the morning. That's That's the worst thing for me is feet. Like, the bottoms of my feet hurt so bad. It takes, I don't know, it takes about 10 minutes for them to kind of, like, loosen back up, I guess. You wear boots all day, too, don't you? All day. Oh. And uh, so people, uh, like, the ride-along dudes, they make fun of me for my Crocs. But I'm telling you right now, when somebody makes something more comfortable than a Croc, that's what I'll slip on when I'm not working. But that old crocodile, man, that's, that's one inch of cushion. It feels good on your feet. Yeah, but see, I saw your Crocs at the South Carolina show, and we can both agree that you don't wore off about half of the cushion. That's what I mean. The dog chewed on them, too, so it's, <laughs> it's got some problems. It might, it might be getting close to time for a new pair, anyways. Yeah. But it's okay. And they're like the whitest white person shoe. <laughs> Like, I don't think you can get any wider. Like, you might as well just be called Chuck if you wear a crocodile. All right. True. There's, there's my corn seeds. And so now I'm filling all these little tanks up. 
You can see you see the stuff bubbling into them. So oh, that's, that's what my good. that's what my fifteen minute break is right now. It's filling the tank seed. back up. Got plenty of seed. I got enough seed for the next field I'm going to, so I'm gonna hold off on putting seed in. I, I think I'm gonna plant until uh until my hopper boxes are empty and call it a day. Cause I got a babysitter. I'm going on a date. Oh. Yeah. No, by going okay. on a date, by going on a date, that means I'm gonna drive Brittany around while she falls asleep in the car. Oh. <laughs> she uh, Brittany, Brittany requires a different level of sleep than I do. Like I'm, I'm still lucky that like five hours of sleep a night, and I'm in good shape. Like that's a long night of sleep for me. But Brittany, she's gotta have. She needs a good nine to ten. Yeah like nine to ten hours of sleep and if she don't get it she gets cranky so well, she goes to bed. Scientists, have, scientists have proven that women require more sleep than men <laughs> adam hey send a request adam adam said somebody must have said something about crocs so uh you know salty robbie oh, he said i'm running his mouth in the comment section he said i'm a size ten and a half send them to tap tennessee <laughs> Send me a request, buddy. I'll get you in here. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> Man, me and God, I remember when uh, Instagram first introduced these, like, four-person lives, like, a month ago. I bet Adam yeah. and I were doing one, like, every night. We were so excited they'd introduce them. Well, it's a fun feature to have because then you're oh, not yeah. just talking at the screen. You can interact with somebody else. Yeah, and it's it's a lot harder it's just hard to come up with stuff to talk about by yourself. Like, aside from reading the comments and kind of, you know, answering questions. But if, like, mm -hmm. from, a, from an entertainment standpoint, as soon as I see, like, three or four people go live on Instagram, I'll turn it on and watch. Did What's you know, up, buddy? It's really Wi-Fi. Dude, you were definitely not at the firehouse. What's up, little man? <laughs> Can you see me? Oh, hey. Okay. I mailed that stuff today. I mailed you the hoodie, yeah, got the two hats, and the three posters today. I got that hillbilly Wi-Fi. I can't stay. I'll be. I'll be in the chat. Whose Wi-Fi are you stealing? I think what he's at a restaurant. Oh, he's at a restaurant. Yeah. He said he can't be on the Wi-Fi. He's stealing the restaurant's Wi-Fi. That's fine. You can steal that. So that's why they make it an open connection. Yeah, I mean, they made it so you could be on it. He's spending time with his kid, though. I'm not going to take up his time. He's spending time with Brantley. Whew. So, aside from writing, what else are you doing? Packing. Packing. Are you moving somewhere? Where are you going to move? Can I ask um, that? It'll still be local because my son lives in the area. But um, kind of just... Got to get out of here. So. Yeah, I got, I get that. All right, that's pretty much it for the fertilizers. So, this is like one of those, one of those kind of cool things. If I'd have parked myself correctly on the hill, I would have gotten the fertilizer tank empty. This is my last tank up for the year on planting corn. So I've, I've gotten far enough into planting that I'm down at least. This is my last pile of corn seed and my last bit of fertilizer is being loaded. So that means the end is in sight. When are you projecting that you're going to be done? Um, I probably, after today, I would need at least one more day to plant. But to be honest with you, it's gotten too dry. So yeah. here's a little, if we can do like a fun little TikTok educational tidbit. I need to oh, find please, a screwdriver please. or something. I'm a dairy farmer. Um, Alyssa is an author and all around just awesome person. Um, but so here we go. I'm flip you around. So this is a field I just planted. It doesn't look like much anything because, of course, it's uh, this is a uh, no-till planting. So all this stuff's been sprayed and killed, and that's going to make way for the corn seed to grow. I'm going to walk out and find a row. All right, here's the row that I've planted. And so after the planter runs, you really can't tell a whole lot of difference that's been there. But somewhere down in this 
little patch of dirt is going to be a corn seed. Mm -hmm. And it should be roughly two-ish inches in the ground. If I can find it. There it is. All right, so there's my corn seed. I just whacked it out. So y'all see my little seed in the ground? It's supposed to be about two knuckles deep, and he still is. The problem, I'm saying it's too dry for me to really be planting. So there's yeah. uh, there's ground moisture, and you can see that where I've planted, there is none. So that yeah. seed's actually not going to do anything until it gets rain. But the other thing that starts to happen is the ground. You see right here, I've got a seed sitting on top of the ground. The ground literally gets so hard that some of the seeds stop going in. And so that's just started happening today. I'm getting uh, I'm getting a seed every now and again. You know, maybe one like every 10, 15 feet that's, uh, that's just not going in the ground. So today will be the last day I plant until it rains again because I'm just, at this point, I'm, seed's not going to sprout and I'm starting to lose my population because they're not all going in the dirt. But So that's what happens when it gets too dry. Well, I mean, do you guys have any rain before it can happen? Friday is supposed to be a rainy day, so here, if I break the, all right, so I'm sticking my screwdriver way in the dirt, and you see I break down in there far enough, I got a little moisture, yeah. but it doesn't do any good if it's that, you know, the ground, the ground moisture's gone down too far, the seed's not getting it, so that's corn plant 101, but right. I mean, I, the reason I used to do three to five acres of corn every single year, so doing as much as you do is like mind-boggling. <laughs> the equipment's a little bit different. That's true too, because when it you have like, it looks like that. <laughs> but uh, so and really the only reason I'm still planting when they uh, I got enough fer I got enough weight on here and fertilizer and corn seed that I mean each each row is getting a a lot of down pressure and so it'll it'll still kind of force it in the ground even if it's a little dry. It just because I'm it's like a hundred percent chance of rain on Friday, it's supposed to be a rainy day. So I'm going ahead and planting with the assumption that on Friday it's gonna get the moisture it needs to sprout anyways. But if it wasn't any rain in the forecast, I probably would have quit already. Just waited for more. Well, I'll tell you this, you know the most surefire way to make it rain? And bite Paul. Well, Every time yeah, Paul comes to my house it rains. Uh go wash your truck. Oh yeah, that's it. Oh man, Brittany got her car <laughs> detailed. So you probably, you probably, oh, the old farm Prius. Mm -hmm. Oh my God. It looks so good. Like it's a, it's a, it's not even our car. I'm, I'm a hundred percent certain they stole somebody's car and we're like, let's just swap them out. Nobody will really know. That's not our car. <laughs> there is no chance that that is our vehicle. Like the seats were black from oil when we took it in. Holy cow. Cause I mean, it got abused. You know, we had kids, like it was the car we had when we started having kids. They spill juices all over. Um, hey, y'all want to be close to my face? Um, they spill juice all over, you know, snacks, pretzels, chips, jelly. I can't tell you how many sodas got spilled in that vehicle. She would pick me up from work, and I would put my hand on the seat, just straight grease, or I'd have it on my shorts. And so we we, we had kind of settled into the fact that we'd pretty much ruined that car. Um, and we picked it up day, and I was like, sell it. Immediately sell it. <laughs> it has value again. I told her, sell it, and we'll buy our old beater pickup truck. Because, I, I mean, she doesn't do anything with it aside from just beat around the farm. It's true, too, but still. Oh, yeah. But, I mean, we could, we could buy her just an old old F-150. She can bum around the farm, man. But, uh, no, it was, a, it was a good car for us. Sell it because it still has value now. <laughs> uh, yeah, it has value I'm again. Dead. No, I mean, the car, I would have had to pay somebody to take that car before we dropped it off. Like, I would have had to, I'd be like, here's $500, please take it. And I think most people looked at it and be like, nah, I'm good. <laughs> like, mechanically, it's fine. It's totally sound. I mean, change, you know, oil change every 3,000 miles. It runs good. It's got 100,000 miles on it. But, I mean, as far as, like, interior, mm -mm. bad shape. All right, here we go. All right, y'all want to yeah. see my transformer? Let's see, I got to move you. My favorite part is the transformer. Oh, this, this is for real transformer situation. All right, there's my planter. Got to get them up in the air some. Let's 
So the planner, in case you're wondering, is 40 foot wide, 16 rows, 30 inch space. By the time you fold it out, you get, you get the plant 40 foot width. Now, I cannot drive down the highway or down the road with 40 foot wide planner um, because that's actually, you know, a standard highway. It's only like, I think, 20 feet wide or something like that, two lane highway. So I obviously can't go down the road like that. So it's got to get smaller. So first thing I'm going to do is fold up my wing arm, which is way out there. You can't see that. And then the next thing that will happen is the whole planter will fold. There it goes. So it's got a telescope and tongue, and that tongue is going to roll back on itself to start to fold the planter in. Now, just so you know, this planter was built like back in the early 90s. So, I mean, it's, it's, it's pretty old. But I mean, the engineering people came up with even then, it's it's top notch. You know, somebody figured out how to make this thing work, fold it up. Not somebody, I mean, a group of people did it, but it's still pretty impressive. Locks itself, pick tongue up. Now I can't drive down the road. You see, I still got those two wheels touching the ground. So I got to raise those wheels. Now my back four wheels are still touching. And then the rest of the weights on the tractor, uh, hitch arms, which are right there at the very bottom of the screen. So now I can go down the road again. And that now I'm uh, really cool. <laughs> I'm down at about, uh, my width now is about 15 feet, which is a little wider than a, I think a lane is, uh, I think a lane is 10 or 11 feet wide. I think so um, too. But I, you know, I can stick one side off the shoulder and then I've got room to go down the road. Now, the only time it's a real bad situation, though, these little backcountry roads, which I, I spend a lot of time driving down backcountry roads, um, getting to our cornfields, like the entire road's only like 14 feet wide. So I gotta be, uh, I gotta be pretty careful, especially some places I go, I actually get Brittany to come drive in front of me and uh, make sure to, you know, tell people to pull up a driveway or something. Yeah. I just, I can't, I cannot get out of the way. I can't get off the road. Um, this little stretch, I'm actually about to pull out on one now. I'll show you how much of it I take up, but uh, I'm only about to go like a hundred feet up the road. So I'm not, I'm not gonna get anybody to move me. It's a straight stretch, so I'll be in good shape. But... Well, I mean, and a tractor isn't like a Volkswagen Beetle. You can't just yeah. whip it in and out of anywhere. I mean, yeah. No, and I mean, even even fold it up from, from the bucket of the tractor to the back of the planter, I bet I'm 60 feet long now. So it's not like I can just pull over in the driveway or something. Exactly. I'm going to come up with a cool transformer name for the, the corn thing. Then. For the corn planter? Yep. Uh, let's see. I'm start. I'm going to start thinking on it. Because I feel like it's a requirement. It has to have a transformer name. Optimus Planimus. Oh, uh, does everybody know that the, uh, you named the calf yesterday? Yes, I told Brittany what I wanted for the name. So you, want, and I, you want to tell everybody what you named it? Okay, guys. So in honor of yesterday being May the 4th, or May the 4th be with you, um, we decided to go with Ray. So R-E-Y, which is one of the characters from the new Star Wars movie. If you have not seen it, please go watch it. Um, so, yeah. We are going with a Star Wars themed name because I'm a nerd. And she's she's doing good this morning. She had her had a classroom, looking good, feeling good. Awesome. They uh, you know, as as an odd series of events, if, if y'all been following for a while, me or Brittany, you know that uh, we had a calf named Taco, and the Taco uh, got bloat over it ate too much basically and, and died. Um, but that was the last calf, and God, that was back like last fall sometime almost. Yeah. Or no, early, like like very early this part of the year. And uh, that was the last calf that they had died on the farm. So they hadn't had a calf die in five months. They don't, I mean, they really don't lose many calves. And I mean, even that one was uh, just, wasn't, it wasn't from sickness. It was from a uh, from an overeating thing. And if, and if it happened during the day, it would have been fine. Somebody would have seen them, but it happened overnight. But uh, she should be in good shape. All right, so this is me. So I'll take my phone off real quick. This is a little country road I'm on. So you can see the road. You can see my tractor is, that's one edge of the road. There's a little bit of space on that side. But you can see my planter is hanging off both sides of the road. So if you're ever like out driving in the country and you 
come up on a tractor going down the road and it's taking up the whole road, just know that it's nothing they can really do about it. Um, if I pull in the ditch on either side, the way this planter runs, if my tire dips in a hole, the planter will start dragging the ground and I'll mess the planter up really bad. So if you get behind a farmer and you're like, man, this farmer sucks, I wish they'd get out the way. Trust me, I know I suck. I want to get out of your way, but I can't until I get to a very specific place where I can get off the road. Um, and this is kind of light. So maybe before you throw me the finger and give me the honk, you know, maybe just bear with me for a minute. Not that I think you guys would, but that does happen a lot more now. Well, I also feel like in a lot of ways, if you see a farmer trying to drag, trying to move a piece of equipment on a roadway, have the same courtesy for them that you would a fire truck or an ambulance. Yeah, it's not like we love being out here for 87 hours a day and you know, taking up the whole road. <laughs> All right.